As I briefly mentioned to you in previous video, if a function contains either co-return, co-await, or co-yield operators, that function recognized as coroutine. As of now, you cannot use coroutine directly by specifying only above keywords. You have to put extra effort to make it work. A coroutine consists of three parts, a promise object, a coroutine handle, and a coroutine state object. The promise object is manipulated from inside the coroutine, and coroutine delivers its results via this promise object. This promise object is different from the promise mechanisms that we discussed in the earlier of this course, and it is defined based on the type called promise type, which is a type defined by the developer explicitly. The coroutine handle is a non-owning handle to resume or to destroy the coroutine frame from outside. The coroutine state is an internal, typically heap-allocated state. It consists of already mentioned promise object, the copied parameters of a coroutine, the representation of the suspension points, local variables which lifetime ends before the current suspension point, and local variables which lifetime exceed the current suspension point. Let's see how to define and use these types and objects to define a coroutine. Here, I have a function called foo which prints A, B, and C characters to console in separate lines. And I have called this function from main function. Nothing special here. Now to make foo function a coroutine, I'm going to introduce coAwait function in between each of these print lines. As the expression for coAwait operator, I can pass suspend always function. To use these functions, of course, you have to include the coroutine header, so make sure you include it as well. Suspend always is an empty class which can be used to introduce a suspension point in a coroutine. In the suspension points, execution will be suspended for coroutine, and our target is to make it possible to resume the execution from the calling function, or in this case, main function. If the execution is suspended already, for that caller function, in this case main function, has to get the handle associate with the coroutine object, and then main function can resume the execution of coroutine via this handle. But usually, we will be providing user-defined class which wrap the handle operations and resume the coroutine via a new type. So let me define class called resume, and our coroutine will return resume type object. But notice, we have not included any return statement in our coroutine itself. This is because the return object will be implicitly created by the compiler, and it will be a coroutine handle object. Now this type, which wrap the coroutine handle, is usually look very similar for almost all cases. It needed coroutine handle variable. Now this handle takes the user defined from mistype as a template parameter. So first, we have to declare promise type structure. Then, we can have the handle. But to make the type definitions more clear, let me declare a simple version of handle called coru handle and it is equal to the handle with promise type as template parameter. Now we can have the handle variable in our class. Then we need to have a constructor which takes handle as an argument. We do not need any copy constructor, nor any move constructors, so we can declare those as delete. Then in the destructor, we can delete the handle and we need function call resume, which caller can use to resume the execution. You can name this function any name you want, and it act as an API for caller code to resume the work using coroutine handle. Then inside the resume function, we can check whether the coroutine execution is finished using a coroutine handles done flag function. 
If not, we can call resume on handle to execute the coroutine, and we can return handle.done to indicate whether the coroutine execution is finished or if it is in suspended state. So if resume function return true, it means that coroutine is still in suspense state, even after one resume call. That's about it for handle. Now let's move on to the promise type. Notice we have not defined the promise type yet, so let's define it now. Promise type is also going to be very similar in almost all the cases. We have already declared the promise type in the handle class. So here, let's define that handle class's promise type. Promise type should include some mandatory functions like get return object, initial suspend, final suspend, and return void. Notice our foo coroutine returns nothing, so hence we have to include the return void function in our promise type, and finally, unhandled exception function. Get return object will return the handle object using the promise type object in the coroutine. So here we are going to use from promise function to retrieve that object. Inside initial suspension and finally suspend function, we can call standard suspend always function, and if there's any exception, we can call terminate function to get the code up. That's about it. Now from the main function, we can get what returns from the foo function call or the foo coroutine call, which in this case, the coroutine handle. And as I mentioned earlier, coroutine is in suspend state when it is created. So we have to call resume function on handle to resume its execution. So here, to complete the execution, we need three resume calls, because there are two suspend always expressions for our co-await operator in the foo function, including the initial suspend point. So we have to totally call three resume function calls. Now, if I run this example, okay, you can see values from the foo function are printed to the console. Now let me remove one resume call from run this example again, okay? In this case, you can see only two letters printed to the console, which means it's still coroutine is in the suspend state in its last suspend point. That's about it.